Hello, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel. Thanks so much for tuning into this video today. We're going to talk about the magical sensation that happens to be Kamala Harris right now. Look, you guys, I know we've been through a lot. I know I have a lot of regular viewers that, and myself included, that were literally sideswiped, uh, literally didn't get the license plate number of that truck that hit us a few days ago when our beloved and very respected President Biden decided that he needed to step down. I did a video that I thought there was some dastardly things going on within the Democratic Party. That is all true. We are here today, though, and we must pick ourselves up and we must carry on because democracy hangs in the balance. But, you know, in a way that I don't think this country has ever been challenged in that way since the American Revolution, when we decided we wanted to be a republic and use democracy to govern our republic, and then when it was threatened during the Civil War. This is where we are. It's a very black and white. This is a situation. I'm always, the, the spirit guides are always talking about it's 500 shades of gray, but this is pretty black and white. So we picking ourselves up. We're dusting ourselves off. We're kind of seeing, you know, what is going on. And this is why I'm doing this video because I'm pretty sure that you're not aware of what is going on. And I'm going to tell you, there is a sensation happening right now. There is a phenomenon happening right now. If you, the spirit guides are using the analogy and the visual of a tsunami. You know, one minute you're at the beach, you're having a good time. The water starts to recede. You don't really think anything about it. The water disappears. You're like, that's really weird. But look at this cool shell that I found. Wow, now I can see all these really beautiful shells, sort of like draining the swamp, if you will, right? You, you might actually see some things that are kind of gross and you might jump out and run away. But what we're not aware of is the tsunami that's coming. And the tsunami is voters. And they're not going to show up on anybody's TV screen. They're not going to show up. You know, they keep talking about that guy, Steve Kornacki, or I don't know what the guides are talking about this. I don't even know this person. Um, but I think he's a forecaster or some kind of wonk that does political forecasting. Anyway, the reason I'm doing this video is because you are going to see uh, after the initial blush of Kamala Harris getting a lot of attention and you know, that's going to kind of wear off. And then what's going to happen is the media is going to start dismantling her. They're going to give you a thousand reasons why she can't make it. They're going to say that Biden is dead wood. They're going to say that she's just Biden 2.0. They're going to say all this stuff because, you know, they got to pay their bills. You know, that, that light bill in that studio is probably expensive. I don't know. Maybe their donuts are expensive. I don't know. I'm just telling you that scaring you makes them money. The faster you understand that when you're in fear, you're likely or more likely to click on that clickbait, more likely to trauma bond or doom scroll or whatever. And they know that. And so they're going to try to separate you from your hope and your joy about this situation. And it's not that far-fetched because many of us still feel terrible about Biden, right? We, we're empaths. We felt his pain. We viscerally and physically felt his pain. And to just like walk away from that and get excited about this young woman, this young black woman is, you know, that sorry, not ready. It's too soon. So the media knows this and they're going to try to use this as a wedge to get you to feel some kind of way to get you to feel that the Democrats 
stabbed Biden in the back and that all of these things happened and it's terrible. And, and in, and in reality, the Democrats aren't any better than Trump and it's just all bad. And what are we going to do? Because we've never been here before. And this is a crisis, right? You're actually going to hear them say, this is a crisis. This is a crisis in the democratic party. This is a crisis in our political world. It is not a crisis. It is not. And I actually feel a little bad about doing this video because I almost don't want to let the cat out of the bag. I almost don't want to spoil the ending, but I'm going to because it's going to help you to know this. It's going to help you even if you listen and it goes in one ear and out the other. You know, usually three months or a month later, you'll say, didn't Susan or somebody, didn't somebody say something about this? And that's okay. I'm going to plant the seed and we're going to water it regularly, and we're going to help you save what's left of your mental health, okay? Now, let's talk about this groundswell. The Spirit Guides last week talked about ghost voters. I know some of you guys watched that video, but it was the same day that Biden stepped down, so I doubt that you remember anything from it. Well, you know, so the guides were talking about these ghost voters and, and look, they're not dead. They're not ghosts. Ghosts can't vote just in case, you know, the right clips that and they're like, see, this medium is saying that she's calling ghosts to vote. I mean, I kind of wish they would because it might be fun. But anyway, no, they're not ghosts. They're, they're really real, real voters who are really registered and they're really American citizens. It's just that your spirit guides talk in a vernacular that you understand. And for some reason, they think I only speak in like ghost or I, I don't know what they think. I We need a, a reorientation meeting, me and my spirit guides, apparently. But the, the other term for these people would be invisible voters. And, and now I'm going to go back because I have talked about this, but I'm telling you guys, I'm going to talk about it a lot because we need to get it through our thick skulls that there are these voters that are say 22 to 32, but now that we have Kamala in here, it's really, it's it's two groups. They're 22 to 32, for sure. For sure, these voters are energized like nothing I've ever seen before. And somebody said, and this is so true, I'm happy that Gen Z is getting their Obama moment because we had ours. If you think back to when, to 2008, when or 2000, whatever it was, when Obama was first running, and how he filled stadiums and pop stars wrote songs about him. And it was the coolest thing. It was literally just amazing, right? That's the energy behind Kamala Harris. She's already gotten permission from Beyonce to use her song. She's got the Brat Girl Summer. Uh, you guys will just have to Google it, but there's a song named Brat. And it's not about being a brat, but it's kind of like being very, you know, self-independent. Um, and it's fun. And it's a hot song. And people are calling Kamala brat as a, now when I say people, obviously, I mean younger people. That is a compliment to her. Her social media platform, her social media handlers have already jumped on this and made the, on TikTok specifically, and made the headline the same color as the album, which is this spring, spring green, which I just want to say, maybe there is some conspiracy theories going on here, is the same color as the AKAs, the, the sorority. Uh, so, you know, it's just like Taylor Swift. People think that she's witchy because her, well, it's true. The synchronicities are off the wall. You can look up Taylor Swift synchronicities and spend hours reading all the things that make too much sense to not be, you know, real. It's, it's beyond a coincidence. But anyway, my point is, is that these invisible voters also, we're going to be talking about black people, you know, black people vote. Of course they vote, but just like anybody, you got to feel inspired. You got to feel like, yeah, I'm going to really be inspired to vote. I'm going to be inspired to talk about this person, to get the energy. This person brings me energy. That's what's happening. Kamala is bringing everybody energy. The energy literally shifted on Sunday within two hours. And I'm not disrespecting Biden. I've already told you guys I love Biden. 
I'm just telling you, he brought a different energy. And his energy, when he stepped down and it switched to Kamala's energy, it was a younger energy. It was a inspiring energy because of her story, you know, because of her parents, because of her heritage, because of her race, because of her sex. This is really a comeback kid. This is a this is an inspirational moment for so many people. And these people don't feel represented. And there's no lie in that, right? I mean, if you look at the Senate, the people represented in the Senate would be uh, Metamucil. Metamucil is represented in the Senate. They're all, you know, it looks to me like octogenarians. You know, I love wisdom. I, I think we need to pay attention to our elders. I think there's wisdom from Biden that he's imparted to Kamala and will continue to do so. But these younger kids, and we all were one at one time think we know more, we know better, and we certainly think we live in a different world. And that's what's happening right now. These people on MSNBC, these people on NBC, ABC, CNN, Fox News, it doesn't matter. Even me, I am outdated. I am completely not plugged in to this generation. I spent an hour on TikTok last night and I felt like I had drank six cups of coffee and gotten a vitamin A, D, and I don't know what kind of shot and maybe even electrocuted because the energy was so vibrant and so fun. These kids, and to me, anybody under 30 is a kid, have taken her picture, her videos, cut them, mashed them in with popular songs and made new videos and memes. And brought her to life and made her. It's like they, it's like they translated her to their language. Like I'm speaking to you on a boring static video. These kids could no more watch my video than watch paint dry. They their consciousness, their ability to absorb information is different. It's like they're speaking a different language. And these kids have decided that she's cool and she's fun and she's also their protector and they have crowned her those things. And so have all the celebrities. Everybody's on board. She's got all the delegates she need. Another thing I want you guys to understand that, you know, as a white woman, I don't really, you know, I'm just telling you what I'm observing. And what I observed is a group of women got on a Zoom call and it was like going to be like a couple of hundred. Well, they got to a thousand. They busted their, uh, you know, they couldn't go past that. They were, uh, they had a ceiling. They couldn't go past the ceiling. Somebody in that group had a connection to Zoom, which is where this was being held and got the ceiling removed. Like, Get as many people as you can. We don't care. They had 40,000 women, 40,000 black women show up, poof, out of thin air with no, no notice. And they had a round table. This is who we are. This is what we want. This is what we're going to do. And how much money did they raise? Over a million dollars. They actually ended up raising $1.5 million in three hours. $1.5 million in three hours. 40,000 black women. Okay. So my point to you is we do not understand what is happening because we've never been here before. And the media is going to downplay this. The media is going to feed you fear, feed you all kinds of uncertainty, but I don't care. This is the last gasp of this media. The horse is out of the barn. Remember when they told me the cow was out of the barn? Remember a couple of videos ago and I got the complete thing wrong and everybody's like, it's a horse, Susan. I'm like, something's out of the barn, y'all. I don't know what it is, but it ran off. Well, 
that would be that would be the potential viewers, the potential subscribers, the potential ad revenue of mainstream media. They ran off. They making their own content. Everybody's making their own content. Everybody. So it's over. These people put a fork in them. They're really going to be a shadow of who they were. And I can't even watch those people who pull up the United States map and say, the Democrats need this state and the Democrats need that state. And this is going to happen. They don't even know. They can't see the tsunami that's coming for them. The ghost voters, the voters that nobody checks on because they're they're intermittent voters. I talked about this in that video. I said, you know, they really focus on people who vote often because, you know, there's an adage in business that your regular client is who you need to continue to stay in touch with, right? It's much easier to get them to buy again. So the regular voter, it's much easier to get them to vote again. They voted in every election for the past five elections. Well, there's a pretty darn good chance they're going to vote again let's engage them. Let's keep them voting. It's cost more money and it costs more manpower to go out and get these undecided voters to vote. Well, they're not undecided because they can't figure out who to vote for. They're underwhelmed voters. They haven't had a reason to vote. They did. They just don't see the difference. I hate to say that a Democrat or Republican makes. Now, before Kamala became the nominee, I told you guys that these people are going to vote more because they do see the difference because it is very, like we said in the very beginning of this video, it's very black and white. It's very stark. You know, one guy wants to deport you, put your, your kids in cages and take away your marriage and take away your rights and take away your birth control. I mean, take away your books, make you less educated. I mean, it goes on and on and on. Take away your ability to get divorced. It goes on and on and on. So these voters were starting to be engaged. They were starting to sort of, it, the energy suggests it was a little lethargic, a little bit like hard, like, I guess I'll go do this. I mean, I really have to do it. I'm not sure that this guy is as crazy as everybody says he is, but just in case he's crazy, maybe I need to go vote. That's a thousand sons, the power of a thousand sons different than what Kamala Harris has ignited in these communities. And I will be the first to say, I didn't see it coming. I said, yes, she's going to be president. I probably put something on the screen or play you a clip right now that from 11 months ago where I talked about she's going to be, I predicted this situation. I'm not 100% right. You guys have got to stop putting all of us on a pedal and then getting mad at us when we're wrong. You just got to stop doing that. It's just not hurting anybody but you. Well, and some of the readers are just going to stop reading for you. They're going to stop. And you're going to be like, where's all the readers? Well, they got tired of being punching bags, so they stopped reading for you. Okay. Personally, I think I decided to just ignore you. So, because I'm here for a bigger reason. I'm, I got to just continue flapping my trap because that's why I'm here. So anyway, I did not, did not, did not see the tsunami. I did not see how energized. It's, it's really interesting because what happened was you don't ask the question, you don't get the answer. You know, I was focused on what my guides, my spirit guides told me four years ago was she's going to be the law and order president. She's going to be very fair. This is in the middle of her term, not the beginning, the middle. She may not be popular because she's got, she's dealing with strife and she needs to just be in the middle. She can't side with the left. She's not going to side with the right. And so the left is going to call foul and the right's going to call foul, but she's calling it strikes down the middle. Okay. So I didn't see this rebirth, this amazing energizing energy that has given us all hope. It's given in multiple generations that have been lost 
that have been wandering, thinking, what is my generation? What's in it for me? What do I do? Who am I? What, what does America even mean to me? Well, now they know. Now they know. They've got a pep in their step. They've got someone who looks like them or who's closer in their energy to them. And it's it's making all the difference in the world. And if you don't believe me, I would challenge you to make get a fake email. I don't care. And just make a TikTok account and start watching these videos about Kamala and how people are translating her to their language. She's got a laugh. She's got, she dances. At the same time, let me remind you of what she did to Kavanaugh in the com confirmation hearings. She's also a prosecutor. She's kind of like a really cool parent to these kids. She can dance with them. She can be fun with them, but she can also put the smackdown curfew on them. She can also say, no, this is a boundary. We're not doing that. So it's really just a perfect mix of energy. Not to mention, again, she's Black. She's South Asian. She's mixed racial heritage. Uh, she's a woman. She's a Howard alum. She's a sorority girl. I mean, those are all power centers that have not been engaged. Period, end of story, not been engaged. It's almost like you found something super valuable in a place you never even thought to look. Again, what did they just say about these voters are invisible? We don't know they're there. We don't know this power center is there. We never thought to engage it. And the last thing I'll say is, is that engaging this power center and all the things I just said that the power center was, is outside of the mainstream. That means it's not controllable. That means it's not wanted. We cannot control this. We don't want this. We must put the smack down on it. We must control it. We must quash, quash it. So you're going to see a backlash and you're going to see them tear her apart and tear this apart. And I don't care. I'm here to tell you right now, bookmark this video. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care if she's not polling well with 40-year-olds or white people from Peoria. I don't care. You're going to see a wave of voters come to the polls that's going to be astonishing. Absolutely astonishing. And once you've flipped the switch on this power, you can't turn it back off. So let's just say, crazy talk, that... Kamala says, oh, I was just kidding, y'all. I'm not going to do this. That's crazy. I'm not going to do this. It doesn't matter. That power switch is on. They have engaged their power. They have found each other. They've understood how coming together is powerful. So this power center that's been engaged is going to be engaged from here on out forever. So now you're going to see the balance of power really shift. And this is going to be further, like, like again, how it's further kind of uh, the demise of mainstream media. It's also going to hasten the demise of our two parties in the sense that I think the Democratic Party is going to split into two and the Republican Party is going to split into two. Now, I've always told you guys the Republican Party was going to fall apart and that it was likely going to be split into two. And Cheney, Liz Cheney, would be leading the pledge or leading the call for that other party, the conservative, American oriented oligarchs versus the conservative, basically batshit crazy oligarchs. The, the conservative Republican oligarchs, again, they don't. They're not so socially restrictive. They, they just want the money. They don't care who you make. Liz Cheney don't care who you marry. She's already come out and been in support of her, her sister. 
She wants that money. She wants us to be worker bees and work and work and work. They want to raise the retirement age. They want to get rid of regulation. They want to allow 12 year olds to work. That's their platform. They don't care about this. You know, are you 12? You want to get married? Go on, do it. But you better be at work at 6 a.m. That's what they care about. Okay, so that's the difference between those two. The other one is very socially conservative. They believe men are kings. Women are subservient. God help everybody else that's not white. You know, you just keep going down the rung until I don't know how they're going to get their, their pecking order pecked, but they're going to figure it out and that's what they want. So the Republican Party will be those two factions. Democratic Party will likely be an establishment Democratic Party really anchored by the likes of people like Nancy Pelosi and Schumer, people that have been in there a million years and believe this is how it's done um, because this is the way it's been done. Then we have these new people coming in that will be younger, that will be the new party, and it will be, we don't care what you think. <laughs> we don't, we we didn't read your silly, you know, plan for America. We have our own plan and there's more of us and we're younger and we're going to live longer than you. So yeah, it looks like we're going to be doing our own thing. But why that's important, why that's good is, as we mentioned before, in France, having four parties allows for coalitions. You know what I mean? It could be that the conservative Democrats get in line with the American conservative oligarch de uh, Republicans to overthrow the liberal Democrats, right? Or it could be that the liberal Democrats get in with the conservative Democrats and they overthrow, you know, so I, I really feel like we need more parties. We, everybody's always telling me you can't, we can't. Y'all need to get the can't out of your lexicon because we fixing to do it. We are electing a black woman president that has parents from other countries that went to an HBU. Look, there is no can't anymore. That's what I love about this moment. What Kamala Harris is doing for us is showing each and every one of us how we, how our limited thinking and our judgmental thinking has limited our life. And not only us, but she's leading by example to all of those young people, especially black young people, brown young people, Asian, South Asian, whatever, Hispanic, Latino, all of them. And also multiple different religions as well. She's proving that this, the, the cage door has been open, but we've been staying in it because we're afraid of what's out there. Turns out what's out there is joy and happiness and just abundance of the future. So I would challenge all of us to use this energy of anything can happen. The energy literally changed on a dime on Sunday. It went from conservative and scared and I'm not, I'm not dinging Biden. I'm going to start blocking you guys. I'm just heads up. I'm not dinging Biden, but every time we were worried about him. He was an older guy. I was costly praying for him, lifting him up, sending him energy. He stepped down and now all of a sudden I feel like I lost 40 years. I lost 40 years off of my energy because I don't have to lift Kamala up. I'm riding on her shoulders, to be honest with you. That's how much energy she's bringing to this. So why not allow this energy to permeate your life, to teach you a lesson that anything can happen, that your life can change on a dime, that your attitude can change on a dime. And in changing your attitude, in dropping those limiting beliefs that this can't happen, 
It can happen. And it can actually be better than you ever thought possible. Okay. Hopefully this has been a helpful video to you. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button. We are going to be going through some ups and downs. I am your spiritual navigator. I'll be happy to help you with that. It's absolutely free. Also, I do a series on Wednesday called Wisdom on Wednesday, and it's there to help you. Look, you guys, this is tough times. Those videos are there to help you understand how to take care of your vibration, help you understand how to make sense of your human life. They're super helpful. Please check them out. You can go to my main channel by clicking on the little swirly logo. And once you're on the main channel, you can see playlist. Click that and you can see playlist. You can see wow videos. You can also see all my political videos if you want to check those out. Take really good care of yourselves. Everything is going to be okay. I just wanted to give you a heads up that, you know, the media isn't going to like this because they're not going to be able to control this. And the establishment Dems, Democrats, are not going to be able to control this. Yes, they're all on board with her. Yes, they've all given their blessings. But they're worried because she's got more power in her pinky right now than they do in their entire body in their decades and decades and decades of being in office. This is a new day. This is a new dawn. I'm here for it. Let's see what happens. Keep tuned in and we'll figure it out together. Take really good care. It's a little heavy. Yes, so it just... is. Okay. I feel that the future is bright and that we will have a new president who will be elected and she will lead the nation with integrity and with a sense of fairness and justice and she will be me. <laughs> That, that, the future is heavy. <laughs>
fraudsters who ripped off consumers, cheaters who broke the rules for their own gain. So hear me when I say, I know Donald Trump's type. For entertainment purposes only.